Hey, what's going on guys? It's JC from Motion VFX here, and today we're going over the brand new release, M Board. This pack includes a bunch of effects, titles, and add-ons that can all come together to create some super cool compositions. So let's dive into it. So once you've installed M Board from the installer, you wanna head over to the effects tab and search M Board. Here you're gonna find 36 titles and 22 effects. So for this pack, you're going to need to have your DaVinci Resolve updated to version 19. And for the absolute best experience, you wanna make sure it's at least on 19.0.2, which is the most up-to-date version at the time of recording this video. But just as usual, no studio version of DaVinci Resolve is required. And lastly, all of the assets in this pack work in a drag and drop basis. So whether you drag your title onto the timeline or with the effects directly to a clip. So diving into this pack as a general overview, we have six sections here. So we first have the frames, outlines, placeholders, add-ons, background, and finally typography. And on another note, there are no transitions in this pack. So we'll work our way down, kicking off with the frames. And these are some of the easiest ways you can take your videos to the next level as it looks so good with simply one click. So you grab the frame, put it onto your clip, and that's kind of it. Now you have this cool border effect that you might use to make your photos stand out a bit more. So diving into the inspector tab from here, first thing you wanna check if you are working on a 4K timeline is this 4K quality box. This just ensures that the scaling and sizing is all correct. Then to the top of this inspector tab, we have an in and out point. Now these are buttons that are gonna control whether you want this effect to animate in and animate out or just appear. Next, we have the content controls. And this is your overarching control center that will give you the full control over the entire effect. This includes the positioning, the scale, the rotation, and if you want this effect to be using the media or as a solid color. So getting into your content types, you either have the media, which is you know the clip you've applied the effect to, or you can change it to a solid, which is just changing it to a solid color. They each have their different media controls, but we'll get onto that shortly. So if we keep that media for now and head into the frame controls, this is now going to control the outer edge frame. So how wide that is, the height, the, the roundness, and the direction of the frame. So if I reset all of these, we can see the curved bits now on the left, or if you wanna put it on the bottom, bottom right, you know, you can just flip these around so you can get the desired look you want. Now I'll move into the media controls. Now for this, I won't really need to adjust, but this is now gonna control the clip you have within and not touch the outer border. So for example, if I move this around or you can zoom it in, you know, you can play around to see how you want it in case you have a frame really thin like this, and you know, you wanna get your subject right in the middle, you can just adjust all of these things. Now I'll move into the solid controls. Now this is only relevant if you have the solid option selected at the beginning. So if we go down here, you can choose between a gradient color scheme or just a solid one color. Um, if you want the solid one color, then that's just here. You can you know, drag that around to see what you want, or you can choose the gradient and then choose your different colors here. And then if you look closer, you can actually see there's a, a little bit of grain across this image. And that's all controlled here in the bottom. So you can have a check that on and off. So you can have a smooth image or to give it a little bit of texture, you have that grain option and you can choose how strong you want that grain or how weak you want it. But just be aware, the stronger you do have that grain, the more taxing it will be on your device. And lastly, we have the accent. And this is just gonna give you a little outline or inline of the shape you have. So whatever settings you choose with the frame controls, the accent will mimic that. And you can choose whether you want that on the outside, on the inside, how thick you want that line. You can also, if you want, choose to just have the accent only. So you don't have anything in the middle, you just have an outline. Why you wanna do that? I don't know, but maybe you wanna have a framing for some text or something. And that's pretty much how the frames work. And then if we move on to frame two, you can see we have this split screen effect. So this looks great when you wanna stack it with a background and a few other effects on the left. So if we head into the inspector tab, I wanna hit that 4K quality box. And then you can see there's a different amount of tabs in this one. It kind of works the same way. There's just the controls are in different places. So the frames is here in the main content controls. We have again, the same roundness, the height, the width. We have the content type. So whether you want a color or just media, we can control the media scale. And then you have the color options here. The same as before with the gradient or the solid. So now getting onto the outline section we have here by itself. This essentially is a tool that can, like it says, give your footage an outline. So if I was to drag that straight onto my clip, it doesn't really do much other than put a box on the screen. However, where this is really useful is when you start pairing it with something like a placeholder. So a placeholder is what I'll get into later in the video, but if I put this placeholder onto the clip, we can see this clip now falls into the shape. If I then drag the outline onto that, we can see it does a very similar job to like the accent on the frames. This just allows you to have the accent anywhere. And it would also work on masked footage that is using an alpha channel. 
So I'm sure you'll find so many creative ways to use this tool. And just like the accent, and just like the accent controls in the frame section, you have the exact same thing here. So you have the scaling, the colors, the thickness, everything you need to get the look that you desire. Now I'll move on to placeholders. And this is my personal favorite section because you can spice up your video so easy with these effects. So like I mentioned before with the frames, you can actually stack multiple of these to get a really cool look. For example, merging this with what we had before. And now we have the three clips filling up the space nicely. So you can see how easy and effective these placeholders are. So you can show multiple clips at the same time, all shaped in a really nice way. I won't dive too deep into the inspector tab for all of these just because they do work in the exact same way as the frames as before, but instead of seeing frame controls, you always see placeholder controls. Now I know next we do have the add-ons, but for now I'm gonna skip over those and go to backgrounds, just because I don't really like this plain black background we have here. I think we can do a lot better than that. So if I just move all of these up one layer, you can now select one of the six backgrounds to put behind this. So if we go for the colorful, that behind, and just like that, we've given it so much more life, again, with just one drag and drop. So from here, we have the same content controls, but you don't really need to touch these this time. Then we have the background controls. Now this is where you can control your colors, you can control the blur, the grain again, you have the, the way the colors are mixing together. You have so many different options, so you can really dial in exactly what you're looking for. The colors here, a bit bright for me, and we're going on this nature theme, so I'm just gonna kind of adjust those to match that. We've got the colors, we'll add a little bit more grain just to give it some more texture. And there we have it. And that is really one of the most unique parts of this pack is just how well everything works together. But again, I will warn you, the more layers you do stack on top of each other, the more taxing it will be. Now going back to the add-on section that I missed before, this is where you're gonna place the effects onto the timeline above your footage. So these are super easy to control and manipulate. You literally will drag them onto your timeline, this effect now, you can see zooms in from a small box into a large box in the outline. If you don't want that zooming to happen, we can just check that in box here and it just starts there and then it will zoom back out. Again, if you want this whole time, check that box so there's no animating in or out and that's the effects there. And like I said before, these are things where you can just stack them on top of each other. You can get as many effects as you want. And just like that, you've given your clip more life. Now going into these add-ons, you do have different controls within them, they all vary depending on the effect. This add-on 11 we have on the right with all of these spokes sticking out, you can control how many lines you actually have. Currently we're at the max of 40, but we can drop that all the way down to as many as we'd want. We can control the line thickness, the, the scale, you know, you can just have full control to get this looking however you want. And then controlling the effects on add-on two, we have these four different star effects. So you can select whether you want a star to come on, you can change the opacity, you can change the positioning, the size, you know, you have all of this control. So you can really modify all of these effects exactly how you want them. And just like you can see, they're designed to be as simple as possible. So you're not wasting time trying to figure out how to use these things, but spending more time actually creating. And the last section in this pack is the typography. Now these titles work in the exact same way of a drag and drop system. You simply put your desired title onto the timeline, go into the inspector where you can adjust the positioning, the size, the actual title itself, font, colors, all of these things can be controlled in the inspector, just like every other asset in this pack. And after a few adjustments, you can get your footage looking super professional in just a few clicks. So I hope this has been helpful for you to better understand the M board pack. And if you have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head over to the Motion VFX website. I've been JC, and this has been your M board overview for DaVinci Resolve. See you in the next one.